Hello and welcome to another episode of Attacking Third, a CBS Sports Soccer Podcast. I'm Sandra Odetta, lead NWSL writer for CBS Sports. Joined today, as always, by my colleague and co-host, Lisa Roman, NWSL analyst and broadcaster. On today's episode, we have a special NWSL expansion draft preview. We are joined by special guest Marissa Pilla, reporter and host. You can see her on the NWSL sidelines for CBS. She'll also be reporting and interviewing players at the expansion draft and the college draft. Welcome to the show, Marissa. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me, guys. Happy to be here and talking all things draft, at least what we know so far. We're happy to have you. Actually, I should have said welcome back. Uh, for, for everyone, you can catch all off-season NWSL draft coverage right here. You can follow us on Twitter at Attacking Third. You can also head on over to our YouTube page and hit subscribe to never miss a new video interview or when we go live. Plus, you can catch great extended NWSL highlights. We'll do draft previews and live recaps, and you don't want to miss a thing. Head on over to YouTube.com slash Attacking Third. Let's get into the expansion draft. Uh, <laughs> let's chaotic, right? The energy. There's no other way to put it. Lisa, Marissa, initial thoughts on, on maybe the week that we just had uh, coming on into uh, this episode here. Well, Sandra, I've been chatting with you about it and all the constant draft news that comes out and the changes and the trades that are being made. A couple coaching hires uh, uh, late last week that came out. Um Constantly things are moving. You always have to stay up to date, but I am just preparing to preview this draft and then like recap it live with you, Sandra. But Marissa, you will actually be on the draft coverage live for CBS. So how are you handling all of these different trade announcements that have been coming out? I think it's just accepting the chaos and rolling with it. That's what I tell myself every morning when I wake up and um, I catch up on everything that has happened. Um, it's just, it, it feels like the ocean is taking me out <laughs> to drift and I just have to stay above water. That's what it feels like right now. Um, but that's kind of the the beauty, the chaotic beauty of the draft. Uh, this is, I think, my fourth uh, NWSL draft, fifth maybe total with last year's expansion. And they've all kind of felt like this. You know, you all, you go into it thinking, oh, it's going to be, this is the order and these are the teams that are picking and come draft day, even like 10 seconds before the camera goes on, everything flies out the window. It's a completely new thing. So we're just trying to roll with it. Um, everything we know today is probably not going to be the same tomorrow. Um, and that just repeats itself every single morning. So, you know, it's been a, it's been a lot, um, but, <laughs> but it's kind of uh, part of the charm of NWSL drafts is just kind of rolling with it, seeing creative ways people are handling drafts. Um, how people are building teams uh, outside of drafting players is always interesting too. So we'll see. We will see. It's fun to see the creative, what the coaches are doing and what the fans and the memes they're creating online too. Honestly, that's like half the fun. <laughs> I'm also just sort of impressed with how, how quickly things can change. I shouldn't be surprised at this <laughs> point, you know, with, with, with all things considered because we are covering NWSL. But we're recording this about a week out of these of these events. It's going to be the expansion draft that's taking place on Thursday, December the 16th, 7 p.m. on CBS Sports HQ, CBS Sports Network, and Paramount Plus, and then followed by the NWSL draft that's going to be taking place on December the 18th, which is going to take place at 2 p.m. Eastern on CBS Sports HQ, CBS Sports Network, and Paramount Plus. And of course, as I mentioned to everyone, this is our actual expansion preview, and we're going to have live recaps of both drafts over on YouTube. Let's talk about the draft rules maybe to, to let everybody know what they're looking at. We're also going to keep reacting to all of the things that have maybe changed up and shaken up these rules a little bit. But Lisa, why don't we hit on some of the, the rules heading into this expansion draft so our listeners have an idea of what they're going to be looking for when they tune into these events with Marissa. And the rules are definitely a baseline of where we have to start. But as you said, Sandra, so many changes have already happened. So two expansion clubs coming in, San Diego Wave FC and Angel City FC. Kansas City has been exempt from this expansion draft from the very beginning in their initial agreements when the club was established. They said, we'll come into the 2021 season if we don't have to participate in the expansion drafts that happen at the end of the 2021 season. So Kansas City has been exempt from this draft the entire time, the entire conversation. Um, the original rules that were set before any trades or deals were made was that San Diego and Angel City could each pick one player from each team. So that would be nine selections 
per team. So two rounds of nine in this expansion draft that would equate to about two hours of draft coverage. We'll get into that a little bit later, uh, but that's where we are right now. So the existing 10 teams in the NWSL, uh, which really comes down to nine because Kansas City is exempt, um, they can protect up to nine players. And of those nine protected players, only one of them can be a U.S. allocated player. And those are different on each roster. Um, and that has all completely shifted over the last few weeks. So uh, another fun caveat of that rule. So uh, nine players protected, only one U.S. allocated player. Each team can only lose one player per position group. So each player is not only listed as protected, unprotected, allocated, not allocated, but also by their player group. So goalkeeper, defender, midfielder, and forward. Um, so let's, I, I want to maybe take a step back yeah. really quickly. So let's I, <laughs> take a breath. We to, just let's go back into time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> before we go back to the future, um, these rules, when they drop, let's talk a little bit of maybe about the reaction to that. And maybe that's yeah. part of what spearheaded this, historical trade window that we just witnessed in 2021 uh, when these rules initially dropped the fact that it was a double expansion draft was already kind of historical in that sense for this league it was the first it's the first time that there's ever going to be a double team expansion draft in nwsl history and when this dropped there was there was maybe a little bit of a split reaction if i recall correctly mm -hmm. there were some who were like there were some sectors out there of the wide internet saying, hey, this is going to be great for the existing clubs. They can, you know, protect a certain amount of players and the other expansion teams can only choose a certain amount of players. And there were some in the sector that were saying, this is actually not great for the new expansion teams that are trying to flesh out and build out a roster. You're talking about 10 clubs where you can only pick a certain amount of players. So looking at that, did either of you maybe have a perspective of it was pro or cons versus one way or the other? I think I thought it was going to be good. I just try to be an optimist. Um, so, you know, that has failed me several times, but you know, I just, <laughs> I tried to uh, see the positives in it because it is exciting. And I think it makes other, the existing teams um, get real about who they want to protect and who they're willing to leave unprotected. Because before there was always kind of that feeling of like, oh, I could leave this very uh, enticing player unprotected knowing no one will touch them because uh, you know they wanna stay with my team. So it was always kind of that little bit of um, cat and mouse game, like playing chicken almost with who you protect and who you didn't protect. And then last year when Louisville came in, they were very aggressive with like, well, you, you left this player unprotected, I'm going to take them. And we saw how that worked out with, you know, Tobin Heath, Kristen Press, they acquired their rights and then were able to turn at least that Kristen Press deal into something beneficial this year. So I think that made teams kind of look at it like I have to get serious either A, about who I protect or unprotect, but also following in Chicago's footsteps last year of getting exempt from the expansion draft with those two trades of Savannah McCaskill and Yuki Nagasato early on getting creative of like, okay, how can I just get myself out of this, which is a lot of what we've seen. So I think it's, I, I always have thought it was a good thing. One, I love that there's two new teams in the league. I like that I can go to California now for work. Um, and I, I just thought it was good for the league to expand a lot of that talent and see new people play with other types of talent, which is of course what we've mm -hmm. seen with some of these trades coming in. And I'm sure we'll get to, but like the exciting, the the possibilities of Julie Ertz playing somewhere new, playing under a new head coach um, with new teammates. So I, I, I like the mix up. Another crazy thing to think about, yes, all of these teams are trading for exemption and protection in this expansion club, but we've also seen a lot of movements of contracts and former U.S. allocated players now becoming club contracted players so that they actually can be protected. I think that also scared honestly, a lot of GMs and a lot of coaches that they could only protect one U.S. allocated player, which tends to be some of the best players on the team that you really build a club and a culture around. Um, and over the last few days, those are some of the biggest shifts that we've seen is that contracts have been changed. So now that they can be protected with those clubs, and because of that, there are only three teams with at least two 
U.S. allocated players left in this. And, and we can dive into it a little bit deeper. But that means as of right now, during this recording, there will be only three per- unprotected U.S. allocated players in, in the draft, which is kind of crazy to think about when you think of all of the U.S. allocated players that, that were unprotected or could have been unprotected just a month ago. Uh, so that was the craziest thing I think that I saw come out of the rules that were laid out and then how the trades have kind of unfolded over the last week or so. I want to get, uh, we've been talking about this all week, but I think it's important to sort of get your perspectives on this, uh, Marissa, because you've got to prepare for a show coming up, the expansion draft show that's coming up where everybody can tune in on, uh, on CBS platforms. And there's a certain block of time that has to be filled. So looking into these rules, right, that were slated for X amount of teams, everybody knew that Kansas City wasn't going to be part of it, but there's still a a lengthy amount of teams there. But now looking ahead into this particular draft event, that's not shaking out to be to be what 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 the scenario is. As of right now, there are teams that have complete protection from from both San Diego Wave FC and Angel City FC there are teams that have ro- full roster protection from either or and there are a couple teams that have what's just partial protection <laughs> right so we're also starting to see like the evolution during this this current trade window of like what roster protection looks like when it comes to being an actual tradable asset so you were a part of last year's uh preparation and in, in, in that draft coverage with with racing louisville where there was that sort of historic move that was made before it where chicago and, and racing said yes this is a tradable asset here it is full roster protection and now we're seeing in 2021 a little bit of evolution in everyone's that. like me too here <laughs> i want that. i want this well i only want that and so we, we're looking at some teams that that are only getting um like oh well rain traded for just uh protection for their forwards in this list and then you have uh washington spirit who are trading for only allocation protection so when you're when you're the reporter for for this type of event having to sort of keep the people engaged and keep them informed what are your perspectives in terms of covering this draft as it's going to look right now versus what it was maybe supposed to look like going in. I think you just need to remain flexible. Even as we're talking right now, what I'm preparing for is going to have to change probably two or three more times, just because we, we honestly don't know because trades of course have happened that we don't know about yet that can have implications on who's exempt, who's protected, who's not. Um, And I find that exciting um, it's incredibly, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Stress inducing, but I kind of, <laughs> I like to ride that kind of adrenaline wave a little bit. Um, and right now there's, you know, less than 10 picks in, in the expansion draft. Uh, if you think back to last year's college draft, the first round took two hours. I remember because I was there and it was extremely long. <laughs> so, you know, in my mind, it's like, if we need to, fill a certain amount of time, we have things to talk about because this was a year unlike any other for NWSL, good and bad. So there's tons of things we can always go back to and talk about the impact on why it's relevant now at an expansion draft date. And that's kind of where I love to be creative with who I get to talk to, what kind of questions I want to ask them, because there's so many people that can put this past season in a unique perspective. And I think that's what we're going to be leaning on is telling the story of not just this year from what I learned as a reporter, but pulling it out of people and getting to know um, exactly what it was like for people involved, uh, people who are now part of these new expansion clubs, who I think it's, I think as if I were ever gifted with the athletic ability to be a professional player, I would love to be part of an expansion club because very rarely do you get to be part of something for the first time. And very rarely in American sports culture, do you get to build a sports franchise from the ground up? And I find that so, so incredibly exciting. Maybe I'm a nerd. I probably am. Uh, But I find that so, just so unique. You don't get to do that all the time. Um, So to talk to these players who are part of these new teams, hopefully, 
about how they want to lay these ground, this groundwork. You know, you have such experienced players being part of these new teams like Sarah Gordon. I'm sure she's got ideas. I'd love to hear them. You know, that's kind of what, what gets me through uh, the craziness that is leading into it, knowing that I get to share it with the fans who are so passionate, who actually care about all this stuff too. And we can kind of take this wild ride together um, and just know full heartedly, I'm trying my best. I'm keeping up with what I can keep up with. And we're going to we're going to bring you, I think, a lot of great coverage uh, that is both relevant to the picks that are being made, but also the picks that were already um, established. And not just one team like last year, two teams, which almost doubles your prep work that you have. And uh, yes, does it double it? Yes. Okay, of course <laughs> it does, because that's always how it goes. And it's constantly changing, not for one team, but for two teams. Um, something that's really interesting that you did touch on, and I want to give our listeners a little bit of an inside look as to kind of what your prep looks like. I mean, I've talked about it from a broadcaster's perspective, being in the booth that we do get to talk to coaches before matches, um, kind of pick their brains on starting lineups, who's switching, why they're switching, if they're changing formation based on their opponents and, and what they're bringing to the table. So for you ahead of this draft, I mean, you talked with a lot of the coaches last year ahead of games, but um, there's a lot of new coaches in the league now. There's a lot of different people that you have now gotten to speak to ahead of some of the the drafts and, and new coaches that have come into the league. Um, so do you get to speak with every single coach in the league ahead of these drafts? And, and how open are they with kind of sharing their secrets, especially because uh, Wilkinson, Laura Harvey now gets to draft this team. There's so many new coaches that get to draft. So what have you found talking to these coaches? I think it, it, it always differs coach to coach. Um, of course, everybody knows like, Hey, like anything you tell us is, is really just to prepare for the broadcast. You know, I'm not, out here making money like bootlegging NWSL secrets. You know, that's not, you know, that's not my MO. I'm sure you could. Yeah. Like, I'm like, do you remember Recess, that uh, cartoon, like the yes. Hustler kid? Like, I got pamphlets in my trench coat of like just like yes. NWSL secrets. It's not my thing. That's not my bag. But um, so it, it differs coach to coach of like what they're comfortable sharing. And of course, like, we're going to keep digging. Like, listen, I need answers. Like, you need to meet me halfway with this thing. Um, but yeah, we do get to talk to every single coach or at least a representative from the teams um, just to kind of get their their perspective on the draft because everyone really approaches it so differently. People um, like to see it. You know, some people put it on a pedestal. Some people are like, listen, I'm, I'm just trying to get through. And it's like either way, there's no wrong way to go about it. It's just coach's preference. And that's always what's really interesting to me is to see which coaches um uh, kind of favor the draft more than others. And I know it's been interesting over the years, because as I said, I've covered several drafts, college and expansion. And it's always interesting, um, especially for like the first year, like European coaches, who this is their first year in like, um, in a draft setting, it's so completely foreign to them. And us as American sports fans, like, the drafts are huge, huge parts of the season. And for a European coach um, to come in and be like, what is this? Why am I doing this? It's it's fun to kind of see the cultural difference too in the approach. Um, but I think everybody sees at least a, a small amount of value in the draft. I mean, you, you have players like Bethany Balser who were sleepers in college drafts. And of course we know how amazing she's been in the league. So it's always interesting to see, but yeah, we're just trying to gather as much information as humanly possible without our heads combusting. So there's that fine line. I'm sure you guys always teeter on that too. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, you're going to keep digging for the info and we're going to, we're going to keep doing that as well and, and watching along, but there is info that's out there already. There were all these huge trades that happened. So I guess in, in within all your preparation and obviously prepping for, for this event, you're going to have to rehash all that for a lot of people who are maybe tuning in for the first time, right? Who maybe don't watch Attacking Third, who maybe don't keep an ear or an eye constantly on, on, on the Twitter feeds when it comes to NWSL Twitter. Uh, and there were huge ones. There were the, the, the big trade between Angel City and Chicago, uh, you know, Sam Ewis going uh, to, to Kansas City, Gotham really getting in the mix a number of times with trading away their their, their goalkeepers and then getting uh, a goalkeeper of their own in, in Ashton Harris. Uh, when you're looking at these moves and you're making all of your preparations for this event, what is like the one move that maybe stood out the most or was the biggest to you? 
gosh, it's hard because I, I have to go with the Chicago trades um, because Chicago was, is always a team that's based around uh, tradition, you know, like uh, and consistency. And they always had you, you could almost predict their lineup, you know, barring those injuries that everybody that they faced this year. But it was so consistent on who you can expect. And my gosh, Sarah Gordon was the only iron woman of the league. She if they had a game, she was going to be in it. So it was just so kind of surprising to see these names that you so closely associate with Chicago being traded away. Um, it kind of felt like the right time, perhaps, that, you know, there's a fresh start. Rory Dames resigned. Everything's kind of getting reset over there a little bit. And, you know, Julie Ertz and Sarah Gordon won a different opportunity, perhaps. Um, so that to me really stood out because I was like, wow, to to get Chicago to kind of break that cycle of tradition was was really big. And then they they traded away uh, three other players to San Diego, too. So they're really starting from scratch. I'm going to be very interested to see what direction Chicago goes in, what they start to um, really prioritize. But also the Ashlyn Harris and Allie Krieger uh, move from Orlando to Gotham. Uh, Kaylin Sheridan leaving Gotham. Uh, that was a whole big thing, too, that I was like, wait, wait, hold on a sec. Like, I had to center my brain and be like, what is happening? And and how do I feel about it? And I think I feel good about it because I'm a fan of all three. <laughs> and I think they're all going to kind of flourish in their own ways in these new settings. Um, but also, we we saw that upon their arrival, Ashlyn and Allie did the uh, sideline fashion show. And isn't that what we all just really wanted? <laughs> I think, I, mean, I think we can all go to bed knowing better, knowing that that happened. I mean, Ashlyn Harris has been toted as like a fashionista of the league for years. And now that she gets to be on the runway cam with Gotham, like I'm so here for it. That's true. It's, that was a really big for, It's It's not good for anyone's like wallet because I saw Ashlyn and Allie at the championship because um, they did that pregame show. And they just looked so cool. And I was like, oh, my God, my outfit is absolute garbage. And they're sitting here in, like, Louis Vuitton pants and combat boots. I'm like, I got to go. I can't be here. I can't be next to them. Well, Marissa, I always think you look great wandering the sidelines. <laughs> and, and at the drafts in the past when you were actually in attendance, which – you were supposed to be flying to LA. I mean, we were also speaking with Lori Lindsay and she's like, yeah, I got a flight to LA and I'm doing this last minute. Uh, the draft changes um, for everyone involved. That includes the broadcasters and the reporters and the analysts that were supposed to be flying to LA. The teams that were supposed to be hosting San Diego was supposed to be hosting a little launch party before the drafts happen. Uh, now, none of that is happening because word has changed that the expansion draft is now being held virtually, which you did a virtual draft before. So you've been down this path, but you were prepping to be at the Lowe's hotel, to be in person interviewing these players. And now it's virtual. Does that change your prep or your mindset at all, or even your shoe choice heading into the studio? <laughs> uh, shoe choice. Yes, because no one will see my feet now, but um, in terms of prep, I think the prep stays the same. It's, I think the approach has to change um, because when you're with someone um, you really can pull from the energy you're getting from them, especially, you know, they just got drafted. So, or they're excited or these, these expansion clubs, there's so much energy around them and you can kind of pull from that in person. And I think, as you guys know, you do this show digitally, it, you have to work a little bit harder to get that emotion out of people, um, to, to really understand what they're feeling in that moment and what, what you're trying to pick up on. So that's kind of where my mind went is how can I make this person, whoever it is that I'm talking to on the other side of the screen, feel as comfortable as if we were sitting right next to each other or standing right next to each other. Um, so that's just kind of, it, it's all about being a good listener. It's all about kind of almost being empathetic and, and getting into their mindset a little bit of how would I be feeling in this situation and what would I want to be asked um, and just humanizing everything. And I think that's important, especially when it's something as exciting as a draft. Um, usually the, the energy is always really high anyway and super positive. So being able to kind of ride that through the screen is a little, is a little different um, but listen, I've never been to California and I was really excited to go. No knock on Florida. I'm happy to be there, but I've been there before and I just, I wanted to go to LA. I'm going to be, I'm going to be honest. I just really wanted to go to LA. We'll get you. Wrong with that. 
I mean, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> nothing wrong with that. Put it out there. We're and you know, we're gonna manifest it, Marissa. We're okay. gonna manifest it. We're gonna say fingers crossed, we're gonna get Marissa Pilla to LA eventually. Put on the vision board. <laughs> it's not gonna be this time, but we're gonna get there. We're gonna see Marissa Pilla in LA doing NWSL coverage. I love it. This was this was awesome. We're we're so excited to watch you in action during this expansion draft and all the teams who are gonna be participating. We're gonna get into the nitty-gritty of who's got protection and who doesn't after a quick break, and we'll be right back. All right, let's close it out. We have got to let all of our listeners know. Just let's simplify it as best as we can because there's been a lot of that now out there from people who uh, tune in to NWSL and try to keep up with the league and all of its news. There's a lot of folks out there that are just like, listen, just tell me what's going to happen. Who's involved and what does it mean and what does it look like? So there are a handful of fully protected teams in the draft. Clubs who will be retaining their rosters moving forward in 2022. Kansas City, Chicago Red Stars, Gotham FC, and North Carolina Courage. Entering this expansion draft as of this moment, at the time of this recording, is Houston Dash and Orlando Pride, the only two teams that are have no type of immunity, whether it's partial or full. So maybe let's break this down roster by roster. Lisa, you want to take San Diego here? I would love to. Yeah. So San Diego was a team that we saw making a lot of trades throughout this uh, a trade window at the end of the 2021 season. And they really took the reins and said, we're going to get the players that we want and, and give just a little to uh, the rest of the clubs that are out there. I think, uh, Sandra, when we talked about the trade window and what happened, we dubbed San Diego as the winners of the winners, the creme de la creme of this trade window based on all of the trades they did and how much it benefited this club um, and really how little they gave to everyone else. So uh, right now for San Diego, they can draft from OL Reign, Portland Thorns, Racing Louisville, Houston Dash, and Orlando Pride. They have a lot of options out there. Now, another thing that I did touch on earlier in this episode um, is the U.S. allocated player. So each team can only protect one U.S. allocated player, and San Diego and Angel City can each only draft one uh, U.S. player that is unprotected. But based on all of the trades that are happening, there are only six U.S. allocated players right now on three teams, and three of them are going to be protected. So that means there are only three eligible U.S. allocated players up for grabs heading into this expansion draft. And I should definitely clarify at the time of this recording, that <laughs> is the case. Because there should be a warning making... label on this episode. <laughs> <Don't follow after laughs> me. I love that we keep putting disclaimers. I, I want we have to. Everybody needs to. Everybody needs to put uh, you know in the in the comments or, or in the yeah. feedback. How many times we put a content warning or disclaimer on this structure may implode. That's Absolutely. what this episode should be I mean, We have to, we have to. So right now the U S allocated players, Houston dash has Christy Mewis and Jane Campbell. So goalkeeper and midfielder Portland Thorns has Becky Sauron and Sophia Smith. And then Ola rain has Rose Lavelle and Megan Rapino. So I could imagine we'll see uh, half of those protected. And I'm actually curious at Marissa for you, when I say those names, so Houston dash, Mewis and Campbell, Portland Thorns, Sauerbronn, and Smith, and then O.L. Reign, Lavelle, and Rapino. Who would you protect oh, if geez. you look at them? Oh, it's like asking a, a parent to pick their favorite child. I, I love them all equally. <laughs> but as um, a coach, you have to do it. <laughs> you got to well, take off your reporter cap and put I on know, your GM cap. I know. Let's I don't go. like that. I like being neutral. Um, so I, I think what's interesting is the, the O.L. Reign situation because their forwards are essentially safe from L.A., so apparently, do do? <laughs> apparently, I loved Meg's tweet about uh, everything's made up and the points don't matter. I'm like, this is exactly what this felt like. I was like, what? Who? What? Anyway, so I think that's interesting. So do you leave Megan Rapino unprotected knowing that there's a there, for, there's only a 50 percent chance she can be taken by San Diego? Now, do you think San Diego is going to do something like that? Why not? Why wouldn't they if she's there? So I think it's it's so so it's it's interesting. And I just I thank God every day that this is not my job to figure this out. 
it's only my job to report on it because I think my brain would actually explode if I had to connect these dots and make something. But I think OL Rain is very interesting. I think Houston is very interesting because they also just gave Jane Campbell an extension. So does that mean she's your protected player? Is th- why would you give her an extension if you're not going to protect her then in this expansion draft? There's all these little footnotes. And when I get into the minutia of it, it makes me want to go insane. So I try to stay out of the details as long as I possibly can. I don't You're know. We're going to get answers to all of those hypotheticals for uh, sure though, in just in just a short amount of time. Let's let's take a look at Angel City then to sort of close things out. They cannot draft from Kansas City, Chicago Red Stars, Racing Louisville, New Jersey, New York, Gotham FC, Portland Thorns, North Carolina Courage. They cannot draft from Washington Spirits allocated players and they cannot draft from Owl Reigns unprotected forward list. So the eligible teams are still all range, just not the forwards. Uh, they can select from Houston Dash and they can select from Orlando Pride. So you've got three teams here. Portland Thorns coming into the mix late uh, late in the announcement uh, with the trade for Simone Charlie, Tyler Lucy uh, with Angel City, a little bit of uh, allocation money exchange, and of course, roster protection as well. So that removed Portland Thorns uh, from the eligible teams as well. So not maybe as many teams going on here for, for Angel City, but when you're looking at Orlando Pride, when you're looking at Houston Dash, when we're looking at O Rain, maybe let's keep it with that energy with O Rain. We're going to center on them as we outro this. For this one, can't choose choose the forward list. So when you're looking at O Rain, I'm going to ask you to keep the GM hat on. Marissa, we're putting you on the hot seat here. <laughs> we're putting you on the hot seat here. Who are you looking at if you're Angel City, considering all of the other players that they've sort of acquired? Like, what is the biggest need that you think that they are going to maybe look at when it comes to selecting from all rain that they haven't perhaps gotten from other teams already? And just a reminder to kind of set the stage for you, Marissa, not that you don't already know, but for our listeners, Sarah Gordon, Julie Ertz, some defensive powerhouses that Mm -hmm. Angel City has already kind of locked down on what they have going there. And then Simone Charlie and Tyler Lucy up top. So to kind of set the scene, there seems to be a bit of missing gap in maybe the middle of the field. (laughs) That's exactly what I was going to say, because right now they're only, well, I mean, Julie Ertz can literally play anywhere, but really they're only like... Uh, rostered midfielder right now is uh, Kerry Recaro, who they just picked up from North Carolina. So I, I think the midfield is probably where they're going to look for a lot of depth um, because you want to make sure that you have not only just playmakers, but holding midfielders. And how do they want to play? If you start to look at who, the forwards they started to pick up, Tyler Lucy, Simone Charlie, a lot of great pace, Kristen Press, um, You know, they have so much pace up top and really smart players up top. So what kind of midfielders are going to complement that the most? What kind of playmakers are you looking for? I think you're right, Lisa. I think defensively, they have such a great, solid base. I wouldn't be surprised if maybe they start to look towards a college draft to add depth in at defense. You always have to look that way. So I think midfielders are going to be the hot commodity for uh, Angel City. I like that for sure. I think I think the NWSL has some of the best midfielders in the world. I'll just put it on record and put it on blast right there, right now. I have enjoyed this so, so much. I hope our listeners have enjoyed the deep dive of the expansion draft coming up as well. Again, for your information, the expansion draft will be coming up on Thursday, December 16th, 7 p.m., on CBS Sports HQ, CBS Sports Network, and Paramount Plus, followed by the NWSL Draft, formerly the NWSL College Draft, on Saturday, December 18th, 2 p.m. Eastern at CBS Sports HQ, CBS Sports Network, and Paramount Plus. Once again, we're going to have live recaps of both drafts on YouTube.com slash Attacking Third. Thank you, everyone, for joining us and listening along. Thank you to Marissa Pilla for being with us today and breaking it all down. You can follow us on Twitter at Attacking Third. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and anywhere you listen to your podcast shows. If you leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts with a question, Lisa and I will answer it during our mailbag segment. And we're also available as video. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Visit youtube.com slash attacking third. And we will be back with a live expansion draft recap Thursday night. For Sandra Retta, Lisa Roman, and Marissa Pilla, this was Attacking Third. <laughs>